All right, I have a question for you. Let's say you're in the back country and you're using heat to make your water safe to drink. How do you know when you've reached the right temperature to make it safe? And you know, it's not what you think it is, but if you're interested in finding out what it really is, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I wanna give credit to two of my viewers who in combination gave me the idea for this video. So first, Hamilton Harper, sent me a link to, a, to an article about using what's known as the fisheye technique to determine water temperature. And I'll share with you what that's all about in a moment. Maybe you already know. And the other was another viewer, Fool468, who referred me to another YouTube channel, and the channel's name is Gear Skeptic. And I'll be putting a link to that in the video description below because if you're at all interested in this topic, you really need to go over to the Gear Skeptic channel for a more thorough, much more thorough, and I'll say that again, explanation of what it is that I want to share with you. All right, so before we get started, um, let's talk about why. Why are we using heat to make our water safe to drink? So, uh, I think most people today probably pack water filters of some type, a microfilter, a purifying filter, or, or something else to make our water safe. What are we trying to make it safe from? Well, the big three that most of us are concerned with, and we should be, trust me, we really should be, are the organic pathogens, and they would be the uh, protozoans such as Giardia and Cryptosporidium. We should also be concerned about bacteria and increasingly so, we never thought this, but increasingly so, we should be concerned about viruses. Now, where you live in the world will determine your risk, whether you're close to ag agricultural or industrial areas where there is likely to be more contamination in the water also will make a big difference. But even areas like in this wilderness setting that I'm in right now, where there is nothing nearby that should be polluting the water, I can't be sure. In fact, I'm pretty sure that it is unsafe to drink without actually doing something to make it safe. So those are the ones that I'm concerned with. Now, we're going to use heat. We're going to apply heat to the water to make it safe. Does that make it completely safe? No, it does not. It will kill, at the right temperature, it will kill all the organics. It'll kill the protozoans, the bacteria, and the viruses, and that's the good news. But it will do nothing to remove or inactivate any of the chemicals or any of the other metal, heavy metals or anything else, pesticides, you name it, that are in the water. So if you're in an area where uh, that is a concern, and there's plenty of areas where that is a concern, then you need to do more than just bringing heat to the water. You need some type of a device that will filter out those types of things. Usually it is a carbon or an ion activated device. That's not the subject of this video. And again, I'm going to refer you to Gear Skeptic for that. So that's what we're talking about is what is the right temperature? Okay, well, I had always believed, and I think most people believe, that boiling is the right temperature. Boiling water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 deg degrees Celsius, that's when you know the water is safe to drink. And it is, trust me, that it still works, that is still the right temperature, you can still bring your water to a boil and consider it safe. The standard recommendation has been one minute of boiling. Strangely enough, here in our locale, whenever there's a problem with the water, they recommend 10 minutes of boiling. Whoa, all right, that must, that's not necessary. One minute of boiling of clear water. Now, what I mean by clear is you filtered it through just about anything. It could be a bandana, a mill bank bag or something. So it's not muddy, it's not turbulent. There's not a lot of um, suspended materials in the water. So relatively clear water is safe to drink when you reach the boiling temperature, you don't even have to wait the full minute. As soon as you reach boiling temperature of 212 degrees or 100 degrees Celsius, the water is safe to drink. But the truth is, you don't even have to go to boiling. All you have to do is reach pasteurization. And pasteurization occurs at a much lower temperature. It occurs at 146 degrees Fahrenheit or 63 degrees Celsius. Now, why then have we been recommended to reach boiling? Well, for a very simple reason. Everybody can recognize when the water is boiling. When you see that rolling, bubbling boil on your water, you know without a doubt you have reached the boiling temperature. That's easy, right? 
Reaching 146 Fahrenheit, 160 or 63 Celsius, that's a little harder to determine, although I'm about to share a method with you that will work and is very predictable and does work. So why do you even care? Why, is it, why would you want to consider not just boiling your water? Well, this is something that's come to me recently as I get more into small gas stoves, like the isobutane or propane type of stoves. I've started carrying them a bit more recently because I've been offered them by a few companies for review. And having done that, I thought, you know, if I could reduce the amount of gas being consumed when I bring water to a boil, then I have more boils left or more heat or more gas left for future burns. So what am I trying to say here? Um, you have a canister. We'll say it's an eight ounce canister of fuel. That's only going to last so long. If every time you want to bring your water to a boil and you're, let's say it's two cups of water or 500 milliliters water, most stoves average between five or six to seven or eight grams of fuel per uh, uh, boil, then you're only going to get so many boils out of a full canister. And if you're out for more than a couple of days, then you have to be concerned, do I have enough gas left? Well, if I can reduce for you the amount of fuel conserved, uh, consumed, then you get more boils or more boils, more heating out of that same gas canister. I say it only came to me recently because honestly, most of the time prior to, to this recent uh, review of these stoves, I was just using uh, wood. I have wood stoves, all kinds of them. I love using my wood stoves. I still do, don't worry, I haven't stopped using wood stoves. But during the fire ban that's been ongoing most of the summer here, I've had to revert to using either charcoal, which is still permitted, or using some type of a fuel stove like isobutane or alcohol. If, you're that, if you have to carry your fuel with you, then you should be concerned about how much is being used to heat your water. Okay, so all you have to do is reach 146 degrees Fahrenheit or 63 degrees Celsius and your water, as long as you start it with clear to the eye, at least clear to the eye water, then your water is safe. Now, you may want to bring it to a boil anyway, even regardless if it's safe at 146. Why? Well, if you're making a cup of tea, hotter water makes a better cup of tea. If you're rehydrating a freeze-dried meal, it may require a full hard boil for the water, a hotter temperature before it fully rehydrates. You'll have to check your meals. But if all you're trying to do is bring it to a temperature where it's safe for you to consume, you don't have to waste fuel bringing it all the way up to the boiling point. So what's the methodology for knowing whether or not it's reached that temperature. Well, this is where the other technique known as the fish eye technique comes in. Now, this is ancient. It's been around forever. It's not something I invented for sure. It's not even something the viewer who uh, gave me that hint invented. This has been used by the Chinese for a long time, a thousand years or more, and it has all to do with making tea. So what they have learned is different types of tea uh, using different temperature water will give certain results. So for some tea, you want hotter water. For other teas, you want a more uh, tepid or not tepid so much as not as hot. So they have developed a system for determining the temperature of the water and it just happens to work perfectly for assessing temperature, especially when you're trying to reach pasteurization. Again, 146 degrees. What's it all about? Well, they refer to it as fish eyes, and you'll see why in a minute, but it has all to do with the formation of bubbles on the bottom of your pot. Long before your water comes to a rolling boil that we all love to see, bubbles start to form on the bottom of your pot, and depending on the size of those bubbles, you can get an accurate gauge of what the temperature of the water is. Now, how do I know this to be true? I brought with me today a very accurate thermometer that I'm going to demonstrate doing this with and show you just what it looks like when you've reached that magic number now of 146 degrees. All right, let's go down to the ground here. I'll get my stove lit up, we'll get some water on, and as the water starts to heat up, I'll show you the bubbles forming on the bottom and show you when it reaches that 146 degrees. 
All right, just before I light the stove up and we start this demonstration off, I wanted to give you a, a bit of a description of the methodology used by the Chinese to determine water temperature. And the reason I'm doing that now, of course, is because with this stove and the setup that I have, it's going to happen very quickly. And also, of course, the stove makes a bit of noise, so I just wanted to take advantage of not having the stove on. So, five stages of heating water according to the Chinese. Stage number one, shrimp eyes. So when you're looking in the pot, if you see tiny pinhead sized bubbles, kind of reminding you of shrimp eyes, and you start to see those bubbles on the bottom of your pot, you know the water has reached around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So right there, your water has already exceeded pasteurization and has been made safe for you to drink because pasteurization will kill all the organic uh, uh, pathogens that are in your water. The cryptosporidium, the giardia, the viruses, the bacteria will all be killed by the time you reach shrimp eyes. However, if you let it go a little longer and the water starts, the bubbles start to get a little larger, and they start to remind you of crab eyes, and you start to see some small wisps of steam coming off the water, you have reached roughly 175 degrees Fahrenheit. The next stage is fish eyes. And when you see fish eyes, and you start maybe hearing some noise from your pot, and you can hear the water starting to heat up at that point, your water has reached roughly 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And the number four, the step is rope of pearl. So when you look in, and you see bubbles rising off the bottom of your pot and strings towards the top, which you'll often see, then you know that your temperature of your water is between 200 and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And the final one, the one that we're all familiar with, is what the Chinese refer to as raging torrent. And that's our hard rolling boil with bubbles rolling constantly, violently inside of the pot. And at that point, you have exceeded or have reached 212 degrees Fahrenheit, much higher than you need to, of course. So, how am I going to know what the temperature is? Well, this thermometer is what I'm going to use to measure temperature and demonstrate to you. Now, this is a thermometer that was sent to me for testing and review, and I have yet to review it. This is the Final Touch X10 from Chef's Temp. And if you wanted to look that up, you'll find that this is a very high quality thermometer used for barbecuing, cooking. It can be used for any number of things. It's also what's very co cool about it is that you can actually ensure the temperature or, or ensure the reading is accurate. So you can actually do that with this and there's a whole methodology for it, but that's for another time, another video. And let me just show you when you open the thermometer up, Got to make sure I get inside of here. You can see the temperature right now. It's reading 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll show you uh, as the water comes, heats up what the temperature is. All right, so let's get this water started. Take the pot off. Light my stove. The stove I'm using today is the Polaris Remote Gas Canister Stove from Fire Maple. I have a separate review on this. I think we're a little windy. There we go. Put the pot back on, and the pot I'm using is also from Fire Maple. This is their one liter heat exchanger pot. Lovely little pot this is. I'm gonna turn it up. I'm not even gonna go to full blast because you'll find it hard to hear me. But let's watch now. And this will happen very quickly. I can already see little currents developing. Didn't take long for little pieces of dirt to fall in, so I did it. I don't know if you can see those or not. Just falling out of the trees here, I guess. I'm starting to see tiny bubbles form on the bottom of the pot. Hopefully that is showing up. I wonder if I can bring it in a little bit closer. Steam is starting to come off of the water. What has it been? 20 seconds at the most. Let's check the temperature. 142. I'm trouble, trouble seeing in the bottom now because it suddenly got clouded that it's coming to uh, up to heat so fast, but I can see tiny bubbles forming. Let's try that one more time so you can see what I've got here. 
169 degrees. My water is now safe to drink long before I reach the boiling point. Let's do it one more time. 186. Oh, there we go. Starting to clear up now. I can see the bubbles in the bottom. Hopefully that's showing up for you. Can you see those? They're both fish eyes and I just went to a rolling boil. Okay, well, I hope that demonstration gave you something to think about in terms of when you know your water is safe to drink. Now, I don't expect you to take my word for it on this. What I will do, though, of course, is give you reference to the Gear Skeptic channel, as I mentioned a minute ago, and you can look up the, and well, at least I can put a link to where I found that article on the fisheye technique, as I call it, the, me the Chinese methodology of determining water temperature, primarily for the making of tea, but certainly works perfectly for this application as well. I would recommend that you do your own experimentation around this to see where the temperatures are so that you can become familiar with looking at your water and determining by eye, unless you're carrying a thermometer with you all the time, which of course I don't, but if you do, then use that. But if you're not and you just want to have a good reference on how you know when your water is safe to drink, then it's worth the experimentation. Now, I will caution you, if you go over to the Gear Skeptic channel, be prepared for a long sit time in front of the, your monitor watching his videos. They are roughly 50 minutes each and there are four, maybe five videos now that he has on the topic and they are so comprehensive that I don't think he left any stone unturned. Every possible piece of information that you would want to consider is presented to you in his videos. He was relentless in looking for data to support these assertions that he's made. And it's just a warehouse of information without question. He is my go-to expert now when I'm looking for information on making my water clean to drink, whether it's from using heat, like I just did in this demonstration, or from any of the filters that are available on the market, or chemical purification as well. Uh, he has it all, but most people are not gonna sit through four or five hours of videos like I did, and, and maybe you will. I found it very engaging. It's him talking with demonstrations, so, if you find that topic uh, enlightening, then you may enjoy his videos. Otherwise, they're a little long, and I've just kind of summarized what he said. But again, I'd recommend for you to do your own experimenting. This, of course, only applies if you're interested in saving fuel, either with your gas stove or with an alcohol stove. If you're using wood over a wood fire, then it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference, does it? But it's still good to know just in case you are using the other methodologies for making your water clean. Okay, I think I've gone on enough about it. I am sure I've opened a bit of a Pandora's box around this topic. I would invite you to leave your comments. I do not take credit for any of this information. Again, I wanna thank the viewers who gave me those links that I could search out and, and educate myself on. But if you have anything that you want to comment on in pro or con, by all means do, let's have a conversation around this. Put it all in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.